everyone. Happy Thursday. Back at it with the Putzmeister 1005 trailer pump. Ian's new baby. Did you hear that? I called it your new baby. He's still, he's still waiting for his truck mount unit back. The pump, awesome. The trailer configuration for what we do, questionable. But uh, the premise of today's video, we are going to show you how easy it is to run one of these new pumps. Uh, a lot of the new pumps with all the electronics and everything else, uh, can be uh, a little bit of a head scratcher just in the basic operation of getting them up and running uh, I will say about this thing. It was super easy Ian, I would arguably say that it's easier to start up and get going than your 2017 TK 60 HP agreed disagreed I agree. The only drawback is on this one and this is a big one We don't got Tetris on the screen anymore <laughs> Oh, dude So we haven't touched this thing since the Christmas holidays. It's been two weeks. So we're gonna show you It's so easy to start up we're gonna do it here without even having to open the manual or uh, revert back to previous YouTube videos instructing us how to start it up. So Ian, what are we gonna do here? Or do you wanna film me? I remember how to do it. Do you think okay. you can do it or is it too much pressure? I remember. Are you sure? Yeah. Don't screw it up. You get one shot of this, buddy. Ready? Look how easy this is. Watch this. Ian's doing a tutorial here. <laughs> it's called trailer pumping for dummies. I can reference this for many, many years to come. So yeah, all you do is fire it up there. That's your accumulator pressure, right? So you tap that one once. Show us how to do the remote, Ian, do you remember? I remember. Okay, start with power on, right? And e-stop, out. And then this little button here, push it once short and then hold it on the second one. Double the green light flashes. Now we're connected. It is that super duper easy. There you go. And once more, light goes green, link it up. So agitator forward is this one. Just like that. Agitator reverse is that one. Just like that. Pretty darn simple. And outrigger. Where's the outrigger one again? Oh, outriggers are right here. Super easy. Uh, now, I have forgotten that one several times and wonder why my auger is not spinning and my agitator is not turning. Well, it won't work at the same time as the outriggers. You get one or the other. So we'll turn the outriggers off. There we go. So we're going to engage the auto RPM control. And I believe we have to do that actually while it's pumping in. So you're going to throw it in a pump here. This remote's super easy. All you have is volume, pump forward, pump reverse, horn honk. Or sorry, that's the horn honk and, and uh, RPM. RPM. But if it's on EOC, you don't need... Yes, so throw it in the pump because from what I recall, it has to be pumping to engage the EOC. So we'll turn the pump on. EOC. Just like that. Now... Turn the pump up. The RPM will go up accordingly. We turn it down. It will slow down accordingly. Keeps the pump operating in its happy, efficient range. So super, super easy. So easy, in fact. Well, if it was so easy, in fact, I wouldn't show you again. But I'm going to show you again, just to really hammer the point home. So from pump off, remote turned off, start it up. Like that. Tap this one. Power on. Release e stop. One short tap, one long tap on this button here on the horn button. Hold it till it flashes green. Let it go. And then. One more tap, green light comes up right there, and you're rocking and rolling. And it's pretty easy, pump forward, pump reverse, auto RPM control on. Super, super easy. The only thing I don't like, when you hit the e-stop button, the engine actually shuts off. 
Now apparently the uh, the software can be updated so that it doesn't do that. I guess previous generations did that because they didn't have a, uh, a circuit for dumping the accumulator pressure. Um, and they didn't want people climbing the hopper with the accumulator charge. This one does dump the accumulator. So that can be tuned out apparently. Same when the radio loses signal, the engine will shut off. If you lift the hopper grate, the engine will shut off. But there is a fix for that or so I am told. So. When you turn the vibrator on, it will actually, even if you're not pumping, it'll come on for a few seconds. Watch this. Seemingly just to note, let you know that it's turned on, so it does not stay all the time. It's like a three second blast, and then it stops. And after that, when the pump is on, the vibrator is on. Very, very, very easy. So we're going to uh, plant our outrigger legs here. And it seems to run on for about three seconds after you shut the pump off too, which is actually pretty handy because if your hopper is real low, you stop the pump. Vibrator keeps running a little bit, so at least the mixer guy can shake that last little bit of stuff out of his shoe. So I don't know if it's engineered in that way or if that's just the way it worked out, but Ian, let's drop some outriggers down. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now this will be a two-man job, well, in a way, because line of sight, that's one of my complaints, line of sight from the outriggers, they're all energized up, it's not great. So he's going to pop this open, you see the valves are back here, but the outrigger feet are back here, so you can't see the feet from where the valves are. Now apparently there is something in the works to move those valves to a place where you can see the feet. I guess the idea was they didn't want the valves in a place where you could be not paying attention and drop the outrigger on your foot. So back there, they're away from your feet, but they're not away from everybody else's feet. The fact that you can't see them is kind of a weird one to me. So, okay, outrigger's down. Good. And we'll do a little blast on the other side. You'll see it's the same thing on the other side. Pop this open. Good enough, we're done. And I was informed in a previous video from some of the commenters, apparently the sides on this are designed to be closed when you're operating it. I guess it's something to do with airflow. If it's closed, the radiator can pull air from outside and pull it through more efficiently. But uh, I think in our climate this time of year, I don't think that's a big deal. I'm assuming that's when you're working in like uh, super hot climates where you're really, really pushing the envelope for, uh, for cooling capacity. So anyhow, concrete just rolled up. We'll get rolling here. We got uh, about 200 feet of hose out today. A couple three inch pipes off the back of the pump. Kind of sucks, we uh, wish we had a four inch elbow, a second four inch elbow to get this pipe down lower. But we're kind of running on a uh, skeleton supply on this truck right now. Just because of the nature of it being a, a backup and we're waiting for a regular pump to come back. So we're just carrying the essentials. That being said, a four inch elbow could have been considered essential today. Anyhow, we're gonna prime out for the steel pipe and out the three to two and a half reducer, dump some primer in the two and a half to two, hook up the rest of the way. We'll go all the way down the side of the house. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hoses or something. Yeah, so about 200 feet. All the way over there. Check in here once we get some mud in the pump and get rolling. But yeah, the main, main premise of today's video, it's just a short one, was uh, the startup procedure for this pump. There's a whole bunch of other options and features that I just way too green to get into uh, and, and or have not explored. Mostly the or rather than the and part of that. But uh, yeah, 
really really easy pump to jump on fire up a few pushes of the buttons and you're ready to rock and roll which is very refreshing considering the way a lot of new equipment seemingly was going in the mid to late 2010s things were getting real complicated um, it's refreshing how how simple this trailer unit is so you know keep her clean she's just a loner rental so we got to uh got to take her back looking shiny someday somebody's gonna buy this thing and we'll have it all broken in for you and there will be no uh no little surprises she'll be certified tried tested and true you're welcome oh it's a blessed day Right over that large bearing. Oh yeah. Beauty. Is it good? Let's do another one. Let's go two. I, th I think they can spare it. I think they can spare the material today. And another one just for insurance. You can thank me later, bro. <laughs> we'll just spray some water on the cylinders to prime out through the pipe. And then we're going to throw some bentonite in the two and a half to two reducer to take us the rest of the way. shot prime or does that count that we're pumping some out of the pipe first then hooking the hose up is that like cheating mildly cheating we're on a good run last time we did 300 feet one shot in our previous video of this pump i'll put a link up top oh yeah oh yeah that'll pump me okay Want me to do that? Oh, one man show? I got a rain jacket. Okay. Woo! Yeah, no. Here. I'll hold it. I, I got it. I got it. Look, right, look my knee. I'll be a hero. Show off. You know, if you used mortar mix like Jeff, you wouldn't have this issue. Yeah. I'll put it right in the elbow. Look at, look at this. You're making us Canadians look bad. Come on. I got EOC turned on. Here we go. Bring the hammer for good luck. Here, you do it. It's all yours, Stop. sir. should track how many feet we can go without plugging. We've got 325 from the last job. We'll keep a cumulative total. 
see if we can hit 2,000 feet with no plugs. There's no way we will. Of shock feet or just in general? Just in general. Oh, it's just plugged now. If we do, you mix the bentonite, it's your fault. I think we're gonna do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like they do on the Discovery Channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna picked up like dirty jobs. We'll get our own show. I get to be Mike Rowe. <laughs> A stunning similarity. We're both full of shit. <laughs> we're both good at watching other people work. All right, still rolling. So our cumulative total is now at 500 feet. This pool bottom is so thick, they just skim that first bit of crud, skim it in the gravel and cover it up. Normally with bentonite, if it were thinner or finished architectural, you'd puke it out somewhere, but this is thin enough and it's on a gravel base, it's not a problem. Okay, we're pumping. They usually take a good bit on the floor before they uh, start spraying the walls. What's, what's the RPM on the... Want to go check? How yeah, RPM is? Uh, this thing when it's really pushing it likes to be around 1800. Oh, that's not bad at all. Which is interesting because it'll rev to 2100, but I think 1800 is probably peak torque. So I bet it's keeping itself more in the peak torque range. And anything above that is probably just noise. I could be wrong in saying that, but that's, that's my assumption. So we always run wire braided for our first couple hoses. And then today, we did a couple hoses, or a couple pipes, sorry, right off the back of the pump. And this was, uh, we did this wrong. We should have put the hose under their water line. But I'm gonna, I'll put something under there to save it. Oh, I know what I'm gonna use. This is gonna be great. There we go, you ready for some, some product placement? What do you think I'm gonna use? What do you think, what do you think, what do you think? Obviously. I'm gonna save the hose. Pumper Caddy is saving irrigation hoses since the year 2022. <laughs> Yeah, a couple pipes off the back end of the pump like this really, really stabilizes things. And we ratchet strap to our elbows and everything else. It's not the ideal setup. Normally we would weld hooks onto the hopper to run chains, but obviously with uh, this temporary setup, we really can't. I might grab a, a, a cable and, and a come along and some hooks or something. But we will get something better for that. Well, that's a heavy, pretty heavy uh, ratchet strap, so it'll suffice for today. It's just cruising along. Oh yeah, tightened up a lot already.
little baby loves it some shot creek. I'm not a big fan of auto greasers. Uh, yeah, what I was saying about the auto greaser, on a pump that does shock crate, it's a very nice feature because it will grease while you're actually pumping rather than mid-pour having to get back here with your grease gun and do all your do your thing. Um, with shock crate being high pressure and whatnot, it tends to, to find its way into all your seals and bearings and everything else. So constantly having that greaser pushing grease at pre-selected intervals uh, helps to keep everything clean. And you've also got a handy hand greaser here too me personally i like having the individual grease nipples and i can put my gun on it and i can feel if each one is actually i can feel and check if it's getting grease or not but uh, but yeah definitely some advantage to an auto greaser for a pump that didn't do shock crate i would probably just opt for manual greasing but for something that's doing uh shock crate all the time uh 100 i'd take it the other thing i don't like about the auto greasers is guys become dependent on them and uh, if they run out, um, you know, it starts to draw air or whatever else. Yeah, it's not a, not a good situation. So here's one for you trailer pump guys. We dropped the rear outriggers down. On the previous pour we did, we also dropped the front leg. Uh, which was a bit of a hassle and a few guys tell me that that's not really necessary when you're still hooked to the or hitched to the truck uh what, what's everybody else's opinion on that today we're going to try it with that third uh third leg up there but uh what's everybody else out doing there or doing out there what's the uh the expert opinions from the regular trailer guys Classic scenario for a pumper caddy. See this? Not ideal. Problem solved. Beautiful. Nicely done. Master craftsman right there at work. Best dang pool guys in the biz. Right Ian? Best pool guys in the biz, what do you think? And Ian pumps for... We can take anybody on. Anybody. anybody? Just like us, we take anybody on. Yeah. Unless they're bigger than us. We were, we were just pumping up the company. 
We're saying best pool guys in the biz. You guys got two thumbs down. We are not happy with the pressure today. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> And then bad with you coming your way. And then Ian and I segued into how we were the best pumpers in the biz, but right now we're hearing <laughs> otherwise. So okay, I'll leave now. Bye. <laughs> All right. So sitting here looking at this setup, and the wheels are turning in my head. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that on that, the PTO driven, kind of like the current uh, BSP70, BSP60, BSP50. Meister does on the Dodge Ram 5500 something like that that pump unit but on this Isuzu NRR truck because this NRR truck we've had it for about five six years now has been rock-solid reliable knock on wood it's been really good it's got the nice little short nose on it so the overall length is real compact but if Puts Meister built a VSP and threw it on this truck PTO driven Mwah. That to me would be an amazing little setup. So let me know in the comments below. What do you think? That's something uh, something that you think would be of interest? Because it sure would be to me. If you're listening out there in Putzmeister world, Putzmeister people, the little man, the little people in the world, or at least this little person in the world, would love such a thing. Well, that'll be it for today. Just a quick short video. We just kind of wanted to touch on how easy it is to uh, fire this thing up and get pumping. Which, like I said, it's a very, very pleasant surprise in today's day and age of uh, overly complicated functions and operations of pumping equipment. So, looking forward to many more videos with this unit right here. Anyhow, here it goes. Like, share, subscribe, keep it shiny side up. I had a new one that I thought of, and I forgot actually. Oh, I just remembered it. This is the new the new line for 2024. I finally got an outro line that I'm excited about. Until next time, keep on pumping.